also a pleasure to be reading now reading now the profile of Bumi Akanu. Um, before I even read out the profile, um, I think it was last year during the lockdown, um, I was trying to do something. I was trying to reach out to professionals who could help me um, organize a um, career program for students and young professionals. So I think I reached out to Bumi because I've been to EPIs before during my student days. So when I was trying to reach out to HR professionals, I was like, let me try to Google the person that is a HR professional for EPI. So trying to Google that name, she came into the picture and I tried as much as I can to reach her. She was quite very, um, very, very receptive to um, accept my invitation and was one of our facilitators last year. So it's such a great pleasure to be reading her profile this evening for this um, session. So I'll go, Bumi Akanu is credited with over 17 years experience, majorly within the aviation industry, to include ground operation management, customer service, office administration, and human resource management. She graduated from the University of Ibadan with a Bachelor of Science degree in microbiology. After a brief stint at the Bridge Clinic as a trainee embryologist, she made a complete change in career path when she was selected as one of the pioneer employees for Virgin Nigeria, for Virgin Nigeria Airways as a customer service executive. At Virgin Nigeria, she moved through the ranks to become the lead customer service executive and later served as, as the office coordinator, where she was first exposed to handling transactional aspects of human resources at the MMA, MMA2 terminal. Bumi's career in human resources took a major turn when she got the role at Greater Washington Limited as the human resources executive. She was eventually to lead the human resource and administrative team as it's held as its head within three months of joining GWL. In 2013, she was opportune to join Airpist Limited, which was at the time a startup airline with 11 employees and one aircraft. She is responsible for starting up the HR department at Airpist Limited, which has now grown to become Nigeria's largest airline flying into 20 destinations within and outside Nigeria. She led the human resources team as the head of human resources. In this role, she provided strategic leadership and HR solutions to an almost 2000 strong employee organization, which includes local and expatriate talents. She has over the years gained experience and expertise in most generalist HR functions. On the 1st of March, 2021, Bumi resumed with Floor Miss of Nigeria PLC as the talent service manager. Bumi holds the Senior Professional of Human Resources International Certification from the Human Resources Certification Institute, USA. She is also a member of the Society for Human Resource Management, USA, a leading association devoted to human resource management and an associate of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management of Nigeria, CIPM. She's an avid reader, a public speaker, and a promoter of continuous personal and professional development. Bumi is a faculty member of Vantage Certifications and Adlam Consulting, where she teaches and prepares HR professionals for their certification examinations. She has been featured on 95 Cheek as one of the top 100 career women in Nigeria, and also nominated as one of the top 100 power women in Nigeria, by the Power Woman Network under the corporate leadership category. She is passionate about human resources and seeks to drive organizational success by influencing its, its leaders to maintain a strong and positive culture and value-based environment where people will thrive. She believes in the strength and potential of every individual and advocates for personal success, which will bet organizational success. She is a John Maxwell certified trainer and coach. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with such great joy and pleasure that I present to us the Ibukutas Bumi Akanu for the tonight's section. Please, let's. Bumi Akanu, thank you so much. Chat, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Bumi Akanu, over to you. Thank you so much, Lara. Thank you, thank God. Thank you, Lara, for having me. I feel so honored, so privileged to be on this platform and talking about a subject so dear, extremely dear to my heart. You know, toxicity, leadership, um, dealing with hurts, those are the things that um, 
just speak to my soul, you know, in the workplace, maybe because of my experiences. Thank you so much. Thank God for reading my profile. A lot of times when I'm listening to my profile, I always wonder who this person is. It doesn't really sound like me. So <laughs> you are welcome to this session. I'll be talking briefly on how we heal, how we can heal from workplace hurt. I think Lara has done a very good introduction. Um, around why we are talking about this subject right now, why it is relevant and why we need to speak um, so much more on it. So I won't dwell so much um, on it. The minute she gave me that topic, I was like, yes, 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 yes. I need to see um, um, one of the things that sort of, <laughs> Rita, hi. One of the things that sort of separates me from the kinds of stories that I like to share on my platforms is that I, sh I like to share things based on my personal experiences. I like to share unusual stories, you know, maybe not so much professional stories around HR or poor HR functionalities, but around experiences of people at work. Because that is one thing that we don't prepare people for. All that we hear is go to school, graduate with a good first degree. If you can get a first class or a two one, that would be very nice. If you can't, a two two will do. And that's all that we hear. And nobody tells us about all that drama that happens within the workspace. If you are lucky, if you are here and you have worked in an organization that has great leaders and um, you, there, there, would also, there will always be disagreements really, but then there are disagreements and there, there's conflict, which is normal in every family. Even husband and wife that love themselves so much, they disagree. Even we that people that follow God, sometimes you say, oh God, I'm not even doing out. Wait, wait, wait first, I'm coming, I'm coming later. So there's disagreements and there are conflicts in different relationships. But then there is hostility and toxicity, which is quite a different kettle of fish entirely. So if you if you are if you are if you work or you have only worked in a place where there is quite limited drama and the, 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 the entirety or most of the focus is on the core job in itself. Whilst the minor things are de-escalated or they are not majored on, then please consider yourself. If you work with a leader who is firm, nobody is saying that leadership should excuse incompetence. But what leadership should not do is to be um, unnecessarily tough or talk down at people. So you can go into a session with your line manager and then you come out feeling less human. But if you have a boss that constructively criticizes you and is generally a normal human being, please consider yourself lucky. One other thing that I tell people is that there is no perfection anyway. We only know of one being that is perfect. So expecting perfection from a workplace or from a leader or from your colleagues may just be you staying in a cloud or you having expectations that may that are in, impossible because nobody is perfect we are all work in progress so even some of us that we are now carrying this mantra of no workplace um, say no to workplace toxicity and we are trying to be inspirational leadership we sometimes still make mistakes because we are human and some days sometimes we have bad days and we may just come off wrong so i'm saying this as sort of as my own intro because I find that there is so much um, discontent in the workplace. My LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a place where I see a lot of need, a lot of need, a lot of pain, a lot of gaps in people and their workplace experiences. I see this in the personal messages that they send to me. And I see this in the kind of comments that they write to some of my posts. So I can see that people are not a quite a number of people are not happy and i don't and the reasons may be varied so some people it might be the pay some people it might be the, the 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 kind of culture of the organization but i just want to say that if you're in a company that pays your salary on time pays an average decent wage you are you are you can see yourself you can see some sort of career growth for you for yourself the place is serving your purpose for now your career purpose and you have a leader or leaders that's um, allow you to be yourself at work and provide constructive criticisms. Remember, your work will be criticized. All of us here, even we that we are leaders, thank God just read a profile now. Lara and I were in a meeting recently with our boss and what I presented was criticized constructively. So you would always be criticized. Your, your work will be criticized or someone will think, someone will tell you that, oh, you could have done this better. Now, the difference is, 
how was that criticism done? So if you're working with a leader that constructively criticizes you and doesn't make you feel less than who you are and doesn't micromanage you and doesn't have all that drama, please, you have struck gold. You have struck gold. I'm not saying you should stay there and die there, but if there are other things that you may not like, understand that those things that your leader has are great qualities that will bring out only the best in you. So that will be my own intro. So let me, let's just delve in. Now, workplace issues can be caused by various things. Sometimes, and, and, and the interesting thing about workplace hurt or, or pain in the workplace is that they are, they are usually centered around our work. So it's not as if I'm going to have a workplace issue with Lara. I'll be talking about, I'll be using some of my colleagues on this call as, as examples because I work with them. So I'm not gonna have a workplace issue with Rita or with Lara or with Ufoma because of something personal. So we are not going to have issues about our, maybe the food I ate or about our children or something. We're going to have conflict around our work. So the conflict, most of the time, 80 to 90% or even more of the time, that conflict or that hurt arises from the actual thing that brought us all together, which is our work. So it's either you did something and you didn't, it's either you didn't do the work, you, did, you didn't do your work well, or you did it or you didn't do it timely, or someone thought that you could have done it better, or someone just has some sort of disagreement around something about your work. Which is why they say feedback is a gift. Uh, because as much as you think that you have sliced bread, or you think that you are, you've done a very, very great job, somebody will, may, may still have something else, may still have another opinion, or may have a better way that you could do, do it. So you must always keep your mind open. So workplace hurt arises most of the time around our jobs, around things around our jobs, how we deliver the project, how we did well on that project or, or we didn't do well. So it would most times not be on personal issues, which is what even maybe makes it even worse. Because a lot of us get a lot, a lot of, God, a lot of us get um, a huge sense of, well, uh, what's this word now? A sense of, um, well, I've forgotten this word I want to use. A sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, yes, a sense of meaning from the work that we do. So when someone comes or there are issues around your work or so, you sort of sort of take it personal. So it becomes personal. And if those interactions are not well managed, it now de-escalates. Another thing that could cause this uh, uh, could be unfriendly colleagues. So sometimes you go into a new workplace and then you know, when you get there, maybe they have formed like a, a clique of some sort, or, you know, they've been there longer than you are, and somebody has not done, somebody in HR hasn't done a very good job of onboarding you properly into your new role, and they are just tossed somewhere in the middle of people that have been working with each other for years, and you're sort of struggling to find your feet, which is why there's a lot of attention now being paid to onboarding, because it is a new, it is, it is a big deal to come into a new organization. Yeah, you, I mean, you don't know these people, you don't know a lot of the people, you don't know, I mean, you're just trying to find your feet. And imagine that you find yourself smack in the middle of unfriendly people that are sizing you up, it now just becomes, uh, it, it, it may become a problem. Now, conflicts or hurts arise in the workplace in two ways. It's either it is intentional or not, or unintended. And I think I put that on my post. So sometimes it could be outrightly intended, like if somebody just comes all out on you. Or sometimes it could just be a disagreement. Something went wrong and then it wasn't well handled between, the both, between both parties. So I'll just briefly speak on this. Then I'll talk briefly on my own personal experience. And then I'll share some tips on what you can do to heal uh, from workplace hurts. And the, and the hurts can be varied. So sometimes it is really, really deep. Like in my own case, the kind of things that I went through were they, they were quite they were they were they, they weren't really small issues, you know. <laughs> they were big issues, and then they went on for quite a, a long time before some quiet now came in. So I'll just share a bit of my background, a bit of a bit of my story, some of the things that I did, and some of the things that I think you can do, you know, to heal. Uh, so so there are different kinds of organizations. Thankfully, I work in an organization that is not hostile, but that's not the case for a lot of people. I work in an organization that is also not punitive, you know, and something happened some weeks ago and I was just so impressed how it was handled. But then that's not the story for a lot of people in the workplace right now. 
a lot of workspaces are very hostile. There was a case that went around recently about in a bank and with some very senior colleagues, the man eventually resigned because of how he was treated. And that is even a high level case. We are not even talking about the junior officers and, and you know, uh, different cater of employees in the workplace and the kind of experiences that they have. So some of us find ourselves in very hostile environments, in dysfunctional systems with bad leaders or with leaders who do not know any better. Let me not just castigate them as being bad. I think that's wrong. So I scratch that out because they are good in that they are driving the profitability of the business. And that's a good thing. You are working for a progressive organization that is growing and is, and is recording profits. They're not recording loss. If you're working in an organization that is recording loss, you won't even be paid your salary. So the leader himself is strategic in that is growing that company and it's and between the leader and the top people and everyone else, they are driving the company forward. But then they don't know any better on how to drive results positively using their leaders. They use fear, they use intimidation, terrible words, insults. They just speak to people anyhow. One of the things that I learned and I was, I'm going to feature this soon on my, on, my, on, one, on, on my social media platforms, is that leadership, that you are a leader, doesn't make you any better than, any, than the people that you serve. So I have a team of 12, for example. I am not in any way better than the 12 of them, including even the lowest person there who is um, um, like an errant person. I'm not better. In the eyes of God, we are all the same thing. So being a leader does not make you better. The only thing is that you have a larger portfolio. So you have a higher level of responsibility. So you are going to be held more accountable than the others for the vision of the people that you lead. Shikena, that is the difference. That is the difference. It is not that you are better than them. And it's the reason why you are being paid more because your accountability is higher. You may, you may not even really, really be necessarily more intelligent than them. Maybe you have spent longer in the workplace and then you have a bit more experience around people management. So someone might be on that, on that team that you manage who may have more IQ than you, that you are the leader. Meaning that the person is more intelligent than you. Mean that if the two of you, you write a quantitative test, all this uh, reasoning sort of test that they do for us, that person you lead will beat you. You know, the person, is, the person may be more intelligent than you in other areas, but you have just been given that responsibility to lead the team. And that is something that should not be taken lightly. Leadership should not be taken lightly by anyone because it is an opportunity to deliver on the mandate that has been given to you and then to serve the people that you lead. That is all. You are not better. So sometimes you may have a bad leader, dysfunctional colleagues, and a dysfunctional system you'll find yourself in a very, very hostile environment. How do you know, how do you know hostile environment? How, how would you even know a hostile environment in the first place? I always pray, may it not be anybody's portion to find themselves in a hostile workplace. It is like being unhappily married. It is like being unhappily married. It's like marrying someone and every day is a night. That's the same way it is working in a hostile environment which means that every day you are going to work, you are not happy, you are afraid. So it is actually a prayer point to not find yourself there. And most times I counsel people, when you get a new job, if you can find out about the organization that you are going to work for, if you can, you may not be able to because these things are subtle cues. They are not written anywhere. So you're not going to see it on, you, may, you, you won't see it anywhere. You have to do some sort of uh, covert investigation to find out about how an organization is before you join. So if you can find out, how do you know a toxic environment? A micromanaging boss, for example, is an, is an example of one that may, may be toxic, especially if he's micromanaging all the time. So leaders sometimes take on situational, so leaders engage in situational leadership in the way that they manage their team. So sometimes they may micromanage, but a leader ideally should not micromanage all the time. I remember when I got into my current job and I, and I didn't hear from my boss for like three, four weeks. I was slightly worried. Yeah, I was worried. What was going on? Why, why hasn't, why, why, why hasn't, apart from my first meeting of my objectives, I didn't hear from my boss for about four weeks. And, I, and you know, I was, I, because I, I wasn't used to that style, really. I wasn't used to that style prior to that. So if you have a boss that typically micromanages a bit too much, it may, it may be 
um, a toxic environment. If you get to an environment or you hear about an environment where the competition is hyper, a hyper com competition, a hyper competitive nature is also a red flag. A hyper competitive nature is one that strives to show itself better than the other person. So I want to show that I, I know more than Lara. So I will make sure that, you know, I just show it. There is nothing wrong in healthy competition, by the way, competition, by the way, because I can see something that uh, Rita or Ufoma did, and they did it brilliantly well. And I want to find out how did they do this thing? And then I call them because I want to learn. So I want to be better than who I was before. And that's the only competition that I engage in, really. The competition that beats Bumi's previous deliverable, the competition that beats Bumi's previous, you know, um, quality of work. Not the one that wants to beat Rita. I want to beat Ufoma by all means. So when you get to an organization whereby everybody is trying to be the favorite, everybody wants to be the, the, the top, everybody, and then they, are, they, they, are, they, they engage in different ways and uh, negative ways to get that done, then that's the red flag. When you get to an organization whereby information is only being passed from the top, so it's only the person at the top that knows everything, then that may also be a problem where people can't challenge leadership or even ask them or you know, question one or two things that, that may do. If information is always being hidden and you, know, you don't have access to information that you need often, that may also be a sign. I just want to share this, this little things. Rude and caustic emails might also be a red flag. So if you go into a place and then you see people so people can disagree with themselves via an email. And so sometimes you might find yourself in copy of an email whereby um, so pe two people are having a disagreement and the mail is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If they're not using rude, discouraging remarks on themselves, then that may be fine. But I mean, they, they might have just decided, they might decide to handle that better. But when you start seeing, you know, some, side, some sort of words that ideally should not be documented, then that might be an issue. So when you see funny emails like that, please be on alert. If you, ha if you work in, a, an, on, on, in an organization or you find out that an organization has a blame culture, that might also be an issue. So be, why am I saying blame culture? There are no perfections, as Elias said this. We will, have, we, we will make mistakes. I always say something to my team members. Mistakes are meant for human beings. They did not make mistakes for anybody apart from human beings. So human beings will make mistakes. But when we start to blame ourselves, start, start to push the blame, that might also be a problem. Also seeing temper tantrums, physical aggressiveness, negative gossip. We won't stop about gossip in HR James group. Now you can't stop gossip because once you gather people together, there'll always be just, there always something to talk about. But then negative gossip is the type that speaks negatively all the time about other people. And that is wrong. So when, if you have a particular colleague that always has something negative to say, then that might be an issue. So all these things put together in addition to others make for a toxic work environment. And let me also sound this. Sometimes an organization may not be toxic. I've heard of someone that works for an organization that by all means, when you hear the name of this organization, you will not tie toxicity to it. But unfortunately, the person works in a team where their line manager is sort of aggressive. So the person's experience of the organization is different from what the organization claims they, they are. So that, that ecosystem, that little microsystem in the team is toxic. Now, sometimes also hurts can arise from unintended disagreement. So sometimes it is unintended. Nobody planned it. It might just be that two people had an issue, um, a, a, a different of opinions that just was not, somebody said, you're yeah, just describing my workplace. Trust me, there are many workplaces like that. So two people had a disagreement and they didn't handle it well. You know, <laughs> excuse me. Just, like I said, in every family, there will be conflict. I don't think anybody here that is married will say that they have not quarreled with their husband before. And this is someone that you are suppo you supposedly love. Even for us that we have parents, I've had issues with my mother. I've had issues with my siblings. I've had issues, I've had, maybe my dad is the one person I've never quarreled with because he's very gentle. So if we can, if we can have altercations with our loved ones, the people that, that, that we know love us with all their beings, how much more in the workplace? How much more will you not have a conflict in the workplace? So conflicts will arise. And sometimes if it is not, it will lead to hurt. 
it will lead to hurt lead to hurt so that's a different that's a different type of um that's a different kind of hurt it can be resolved as long as the two people are committed in resol in resolving the issue now um i'll just speak briefly about my own personal experience so that you, you all that um <laughs> when lara says <laughs> Chris, 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 I'm sure. when lara says that um she's known me for a while and she through there are people here that met me at a time when it was really i mean i was i was i was not in a very good place you know and some of the things that i did are things that i put in my tips here on how to heal when i came into my life in 2019 i think i was already coming out of you know of, of this hurt that i was feeling a lot I always say to myself that one of the reasons why I had to experience workplace toxicity was because I was extremely naive. I was too naive. I didn't know anything. I was too naive. I was too innocent. I was just, you know, you know, you know, I don't know if anybody has seen this right. I think it was YF that wrote it, where he explained the types of people in the workplace, the fox, the owl, and the donkey. So the fox is that very cunning person at work, does everything to rise. The donkey is the sweater. <laughs> so I think I was more of the donkey. And then the owl is that finds the balance. So I didn't know I was too innocent. I didn't, I thought it was me, right? Who doesn't have any agenda? Who just comes to work to, just to get the work done and done? And I found out very, very quickly, or maybe not so quickly, that that's not the case. One of the biggest disservice that you will do to yourself is not to respect or regard the people around you whether they are your juniors or your seniors regardless everybody has power in one way or the other and that's another topic entirely that's office politics understanding the people that that you work with those that are around you trying to understand their agenda the things that mean that make meaning to them so for example i know that lara for example cannot tolerate you know like shoddy work or you know something that is just half-heartedly done Christiana, for example, if Christiana calls me, I know Christiana can spend about 15 minutes, you know, explaining to me in detail something that maybe me, I will spend five minutes to say. But I can't now because I, I will talk for five minutes and Christiana, because Christiana is very thorough, you know, spends a little bit more time explaining herself. And I just tell her, oh, quickly get off the phone. I have something else to do. That is me not managing my workplace. And the next time Christiana, if Christiana is that sort of carry her bitterness to another to another place then it becomes even worse you know our work so you need to understand try please understand the people that you work with understand the person you report to understand your peers and the, the people that report to you if you just go in there blindly and you're just just not paying attention to the people and some of the deep the ways that they have and the things that can that can that might take them off the wrong way, then you might find yourself in trouble very a bit too naive. I wasn't paying attention to language from the top, from language and all of that. And I got into trouble. A lot of people will not know here, but I've gone through uh, <laughs> judgments, you know, when you when fair judgments, when judgments were taken on me that was not fair. I wasn't given a fair trial and a decision was taken on, on me at that point in time. I've experienced betrayals, you know, you know, the people that will stand behind you and just stab your back. Because you also, you, are, you don't know who to talk to. You don't know who you, who you should not talk to. You're just talking. You don't know who is just going to go and um, say everything you said to another player. So I was not, I, I, was, I was too naive. And I needed to, and I needed to learn some of these things. Apart from also being naive, things that I worked were just unnecessarily toxic, like issues that didn't need to be blown, will be blown, blown out of proportion. And then you now find yourself like 50% of your emotions, uh, sorry, 50% of your headspace is being spent on unnecessary things. When the remaining 50% is what you have to focus on the core job. People are yelling, leaders are yelling, seeing emails. You know, very strong worded emails flying up and down, threats and all of that. And something that I have gone through. A lot of people would not know because they will see this picture that is on this Stubbers, um, this Stubbers banner now. That's very fine. Something that I've paid somebody to airbrush, you know, and that is all they see. I'm sorry, I have to laugh. 
<laughs> that was the purpose of this thing. Though. That was the purpose was to make people laugh. You know, I paid somebody to make this picture look this way, to make it look professional. But beyond this beautiful picture you see is someone that has a lot of stories, deep stories. You know, deep stories I learned in, I learned in pain and now I am grateful for that pain. But what I don't know is I don't pay it forward. I don't pay it forward because when I was even going through toxicity, I didn't know. You know, if you don't know, you don't know. You don't know because it's psychological. You don't understand it. And I was projecting it also on the teams that I was leading, on the people that I was leading. And I had as large as 15 man teams at some point in time. And just as I was being yelled at, I would yell back at them too. Just like I was being, as I received some, 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 some mails I didn't like, I would send those kind of mails back because I didn't know any better. I wasn't prepared. I eventually had to heal. I had to look within myself to start that place of healing. I, I even had to identify first. I had, I had to first of all come to with the fact that, oh, this is pain. Because, you know, we, 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 we were... We were not only men that were trained to be very tough oh. in this Nigeria now, the way that our parents were to be tough. So being trained, and I, I was the first born and all of that. So I was always trained that. So I didn't even acknowledge that pain for the longest time because I just went on and just continued to go on and just, so I had to acknowledge the pain and then start a process of healing from it. And now I'm grateful that I went through it. Although, although maybe I didn't have to, to go through it for such a long time. It changed me. Uh, you know, I sort of learned in pain. And so a lot of times now, when I'm in the, in the a lot of times I, 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 I seem to be very, uh, what's the word now? Slightly unassuming. And I, it's because of the way, it's because of the kind of things that I, the way that, um, the way that I processed my pain to better in it. So I'll just go through some things that um, you, um, to help you heal from workplace hurt or workplace trauma or as the case may be. I've explained the kind of hurts that you can experience at work. They can be intended, they can be unintended, you know. But whichever one it is, I tell you that your, 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 your emotions have been bruised. So the very first thing is that you have to come to terms with those feelings. Accept that this has happened. Don't brush it away. Because if you brush it away, Somebody wrote something in the HR Gems group and said that workplace toxicity can lead to even broken homes. And that's the truth. Because a lot of us, a lot of people take all that pain from the work, from their jobs, and then take it home and then download children. Those of us that have children, how many of us can really claim that we don't take out our frustrations on our children, except maybe we have now grown within our parenting skills. I used to probably still do one once in a while because we are all still a work in progress. So imagine that you, are, you work in a very hostile place. This means that every time you get home, you will just download and offload for that on your innocent children. It's very easy for us to download on our children because they are innocent and they cannot hurt us back. They don't have the power to hurt us back. This is how many children can talk back at their parents here. Even though, yes, yeah, so we are now, we, we, probably, we, are, we probably are not raising our children like the way we were raised, but it's highly unlikely that there's, a, there's someone here that has a child that is the mom or the dad. No, there's that high level of respect. So we go back home, do these things, and then there's a, there's a you know, there's, a, there's, there's this ripple effect, just not only in the workplace, because you are being toxic to other people at work, toxicity but you're also dishing out that toxicity in your home and then thereby we are just creating this long line of bruised individuals that now grow up to become dysfunctional so it is it it, it, it is it is a canker one and we need to stop it we need to identify it we need to identify it within ourselves we need to identify it in people and see how we can help them especially those of us that are hr professionals and we need to just find a way to stop this. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, because the legal system is not as strong as it is in, in countries, then a lot, of, a lot of these things go on unchecked. So the first thing is to come to terms with those feelings that indeed, um, this has happened. I've been hurt. This person has hurt me. Oh, Lara said something I didn't like. Christiana said something I didn't like. 
I don't like what she did. Did she say it on purpose or not? Then I start to think around it and sort of start how to resolve. Resolution is important. Just like in a husband marriage or in any other relationship at all, if you have an altercation with an unreasonable person, try when all the tempers have been have gone down, try to see how you can resolve. Very, very important. Try to so that there are no, so that it doesn't degenerate further. So come to terms with those feelings. Embrace those feelings. Acknowledge it that this thing that my boss me is not good. Don't say, eh, because he's the leader, he can talk to me anyhow. No, nobody is allowed to talk to anybody anyhow. It is not allowed. It is, it is not allowed. Nobody is allowed to talk to a human being in a way that makes them feel less than human. It is not allowed. So acknowledge it. Acknowledge it that, oh, what this person did to me was not proper. This person should not have thrown a shoe at me. This person should not have thrown their mobile phones at me. Should not have done any of these things because these things happen. So acknowledge it. Number two, apart from some extreme reactions, understand that in the workplace, nothing is personal. Remember that I had said earlier that a lot of these conflicts are from our jobs. So Bumi sent a report and Lara is like, ah, Bumi, did you before sending? And then me, I just take off and I was wrong with that. Why is she always like this? But forgetting that it is about the work that I sent, that eventually if I share this thing to the that thing that she has picked out might, um, it's, it's going to be an issue for a larger audience. So maybe she's trying to help me. So understand that in the workplace, nothing is personal. Remember I said earlier, people are trying to serve their agenda. Every grow in the various ways that they know how to grow. Yes, some people are doing it negatively. Other people are not doing it negatively. They're just doing what they know how to do. So it's not personal. When your boss corrects you or when your boss says something that maybe you don't like, think about the core of the issue. This thing arose because of something that I didn't do well. Yes, maybe my boss or, or this my colleague did not say it in the way that I don't like really really not personal we didn't come to work it's because of the position that you are that you occupy in that seat like i said except for some few cases or some few cases can be personal but some other cases a lot of other cases they are not personal so if i was not talent services manager for flower meals for you know i may not have some conflicts that i would have with some of my colleagues or other people there so it's not personal it's about the role talent services manager is not so you have to remove you have to learn um, in order to heal well, to remove a lot of personal judgments in the way that you interpret some of this. Number two, or oh, sorry, number three, to find some, you have to find purpose in, uh, in your work beyond some of the things that, some of those external things that we come to work to do. So there's a deeper meaning, and this is a bigger conversation. There's a deeper meaning, there's a deeper reason in what you do. So I'm not just in flower mills as a talent services manager. That's just, what is my own purpose? So for example, I know that practicing HR now is a calling. I know, I know that it is a calling. It is like a ministry. It's something that was handed over to me to do. I may not know the entire, the reasons why, but I know that beyond the fact that, oh, this is my job description, there is a deeper calling in my work. And that is why I serve the employees of Flower Mills with much fear and trembling. May I focus, may, can I focus on that deeper purpose? Aside all these other little things, right and center. So if two or three people annoy me in a week, my deeper calls to me. The deep reason why I'm there calls deeper allows me to continue. Because indeed, nothing is easy in life. All these uh, unicorns that we have, they call them, most people that are making big, big tech. I'm sure they didn't start out easy. If someone, one of them, so we hear billions of dollars, they come and tell us their stories that we'll be, we'll be wondering that, wow, also they went through this, things that were rejected and all this. So nobody really promised us a life ease or a life of roses and cherries. Like I always say, things I had to tell myself. I had to get rid of the victim, victim mentality. Oh, no, no, oh, they did this to me. Oh, mama, mama. And they did that to me. I'm whining all over the place. 
and look at myself, talk to myself, Obumi, perhaps if you have done this here, maybe, maybe not, but how do you... Oh, Lola, please, can you fix your mic, Lola? How do you come out of this hole? So find purpose in your job. Find purpose in what you do. Find the thing there that gives joy. For me, I love that my job interfaces with employees that everybody needs help. But it leaves us in talent services to do something for it. Plus the janitor, you know, plus from the guy that is a te technical guy that wears, you know, the overall very low, low in the cadre to, the, to, to, to my boss, the Group Human Resources and Services Director. Everybody, we are there to serve everybody. all the same. Everybody's the same, just that some people are more senior than others. So that's the purpose for me in serve the employees that have been, and, 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 and I always say that it's not a coincidence that my current title is coined as it is, because it's just what I am. We, you have to solve Solving that problem and committing yourself to that purpose at work or even outside of the workplace will give you um, a, a different perspective into the issues that you may find disturbing. Also, very important is to focus on other areas of your life. So who else are you apart from an employee? Who else is Bumi apart from a talent services manager? I remember one time when I went recruitment wrong. Christina will probably be able to, 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 to relate to this. Uh, we recruited some pilots then in airpiece and I think they all couldn't be the demo demonstration flights. This was at the beginning of my career then. The, the, the director of flight operations didn't present to me the requirements that the pilots needed. I also knew in uh, recruiting for, for such a technical role. And then we had this bunch of pilots and I mean, they couldn't be used by the organization for the demonstration flights. They could be used later, but they couldn't be used for the demonstration flights, which was what we we're going to use to get our operator's license and start to fly. So, or a um, new pilot. So it was just like, oh, we just wasted money and we didn't do what we we're supposed to do at, what we, at the time we we're supposed to do. So it became an issue. And I remember that when I go home, I was and I was probably crying and everything. And my husband told me something. He said, Boom. Yes, you've made a mistake and all of that, but no matter how many mistakes you make out there in the world, the girls and I will always be here for you. So who else are you apart from your role? Yes, we have, we tie a lot of importance to the work that we do, but that's not all that we are. That's not all that we are. This is but just one part of the richness of life. So if you take the offenses at work, because offenses will always come, Jesus, they offended him. Offenses will always come. So how will they offend you at work? So offenses will always come. So if you major those offenses, you forget every other thing in your life that's going on in your life. So wife, mom, sibling, maybe you're even a part owner in a business or you have a side also or something else that you're doing. Also, the, the, the level of importance that you give to your work, give those other parts of you that same importance as well. Those are all about the experiences all at work, so much so that they become like, make something happens at work, you are totally shattered. When somebody shout or talks to you in a way that you don't like at work, it affects you for one week. You know, find meaning in other things. Of course, we talk about this a lot, about emotional intelligence, understand your emotions, understand your triggers, and learn to de-escalate situations. So, well, I am a choleric, but a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know. But when I say it, my husband said to me some time ago that, ah, we're looking at that thing like higher personality. It was like, ah, boomy choleric, me. Yeah. to myself. A lot of people don't know because I had to learn how to understand that that's bringing that personality style to to my leadership style was not going well and thankfully i have another one of those personalities and sort of subsumed the choleric in the other personality which is a phlegmatic so that's what most people see now because i can't be coming all the time to the workplace i'm just demanding demanding do this do this do that and then i'm just talking to people anyhow and that's the choleric will will use all manners to achieve their objectives and they don't care about the trail of that they live in their week as long as the job gets done. So I had to who I was, 
uh, my emotions, my triggers, because that makes me angry and sort of be aware. So when somebody is talking to me in a way that I don't, instead of me just getting angry immediately and react, I, I would tell, I would feel that emotion that, ah, Bumi, you are getting angry. This is actually the time for you to keep quiet. Bumi, you are getting irritated. This is actually the time for you not to say anything. Or if you want to say anything at all, say it in a way that is palatable. Very HR professionals and leaders, emotional intelligence is a no-brainer. You can't go anywhere if you don't have it. So understand your emotions, understand your triggers, escalate situations. Also understand the other person's annoyance as well. So if you do a presentation and it's not well done, maybe you didn't cross your eyes and dot the T's, and the other person, maybe your boss is up you need to understand the reason for them being upset. As long as they didn't see you anyhow. But if they called you out to say, oh, Bumi, this is poor shoddy work. It's poor shoddy work. Why would you take offense? Because it, it is really what it is, poor shoddy work. Although some people might not say it that way. But you, you need to understand that there are different kinds of personalities in the workplace, different experiences. Some people believe in tough love. And that's the way that I, I, I used to be tough love. Oh, I've been giving tough love to my younger ones since I was growing up and the first child and all of that. So I'll just say it. And, but then I realized that women, you can't always say it as it is. But a lot of leaders have not come to this or they haven't come to this reality. So they, they don't really know how to um, deliver or how to correct or coach someone through something they haven't done well. But for you that you're receiving end of that criticism, look um, you know, look, look at, look at, look, look, look indeed at what you've done and understand whether or not you did it well. And don't learn to de-escalate situations. If somebody sends you an email or talks to you in a way that you don't like, don't give, don't do bas bos, bas bos, bas bos. Don't do it. You know. So if you receive an email, I have, I have, I used to be that person. When I get an email and I write very well, actually, I'm gifted. So I just I would compose it for you. Respond three, four paragraphs, put the where that I need to put it and I send it to you and I'll be feeling very cool with myself that I've done something. But really, it was rubbish. So what you need to do when you come into those kind of situations is to de-escalate it. You know, de-escalate it then find a way to speak, to communicate later or de-escalate it. Don't let a situation go out of hand. So if somebody writes something to you that you don't like, don't don't now do back. Don't 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 do tit for tat. To do tit for tat, it's it escalates and it gets out of hand. Try to communicate with drones. So if someone on your team or someone does something like, try to find a time, a, a good time when all the tempers have gone down, and then speak to them. Make sure that the tempers have gone down. Sometimes it may take a, or even up to a week, but talk. If you don't communicate, especially if that relationship is important for you, and you must know the relationship that is important for you in the workplace. If the relationship is important for you, find a way to talk that. You know what? I, on the day you sent this mail, on the day that we had this conversation, I just felt a little bit like, hey, really? Yeah, what happened? Sometimes the person may not have even known. So try and communicate. Also, like I mentioned earlier, even though you work in a toxic environment, it's also good to take a look at yourself and see how you can improve yourself. Do you do something that contributed to the way that you were being spoken to? Or is it that your ego was just being bruised? There's, some, there's, a, book, there's a book about your ego being the enemy. You need to really manage your ego. In thing that, that, that self-aggrandizement, that thing that makes you feel that, oh, nobody can even talk to you in a certain way. You know, so manage your ego, manage, understand that maybe it's just your ego that was bruised. And indeed, maybe you, you, you may have done the work better. Then find ways to decompress at work. Very, very important. How do you decompress at work? Some of us have trusted relationships within the workspace. I remember someone called me um, some, some time back, uh, sometime this week, and the person had just done a presentation, and the presentation had gone <laughs> the person had gone awfully wrong, you know, and the person just talked about it. That ah, if you see the, what happened to me in this presentation, that's both, that's both, both. And that was the person, and is a colleague, and that was the person's way of sort of relieving stress from that uh, intense moment. So find if you are if you to work in an organization whereby you can make a few friends, that might also take some time. 
friends at work is also tricky because you don't know who is who. So it might take time for you to make friends at work. But if you, if you have found a trusted person, to decompress with the person. I used to listen to music a lot when I'm stressed at work or when down. So I'll just play music. Music has a way of lifting my soul, not just at work or even at home as well. If I have a negative situation at home, music has a way of just lifting my soul. You know, so do whatever works for you. If you want to jog on the spot, if you want to punch something invisible, whatever it is that works for you. But find a trusted ally at work that you can speak with and just become a person. Also speak to a coach, a mentor, or a trusted professional. This was a game changer. 2019, one particular individual came into my life and just changed the way that I, uh, my negative experiences. And many others have come in from then. And what these people provided for me was a fresh perspective around my experience. And also me to see that I was not walking alone. Hey, is that what happened to you? Uh, can they share their own experience? It's like, ah, you are even grateful that your own was even small. So you sort of feel like you there's a community. There, it's not just you that is walking this road. This is also happening. Body, forget all this hot suits that we wear. Forget all this makeup and you know the way that that we appear and walk very powerfully with our heels and our designer bags and what 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 may be. Other things happen. There are good days, there are bad days, there are extremely torrid days. So when you find a trusted person to talk about your pain with, the person will help you. Very, very important. And this is no, this is by means list in my list and in my own list. And I never have conversations without mentioning this. Lean on a higher power. So yes, we are work and everything, and we are all we are doing all these reports and we are doing all these fine fancy things. But understand that there is a higher driving a lot of the things that we see. The physical is birthed by things happening in the spiritual. And you will be naive to think that the, everything you are seeing is just physical. Oh, the building of your office, everything is physical. A lot of these things started from a spiritual place. So engage God or engage God. Well, I will speak uh, from engage God. Speak to God. Speak to the Holy Spirit. Speak to the higher power that is you about your heart. And talk to him to open your eyes, to teach you, to help you to fix the situation. Very, very key. I've been the first thing that I would say. Very, very, very key. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit make you see how it is about you. I remember once when I was, when, when, when I thought, that was, was very that were very toxic. I was working in a place whereby the 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 MD liked gossip. So some of my team members were gossiping and all of that. And I was just praying one day and I was them. So you know this mountain of fire prayers now that booklet command the money. So I was really throwing all those bullets and very clearly I heard anywhere with your team members if you don't love them as clear. They, as in, I don't even know how to explain the way I heard this. Like, there is no leadership without love. You, mean, you are not going anywhere. Love your people if you want to make progress with them. And so I had to change my tactic. And finally, if you find yourself in a very toxic environment and you have tried everything to, to change the place, you have tried everything to change everything, you've improved on your deliverables, you've done all that, and there is no improvements, and that longer serves your purpose then start to make a plan b start to make a plan b nobody is tied to an organization to work organization forever and ever and ever um, workplace relationships are uh, there's a synergy so the place has to serve you have to serve your employers employers also have to serve you and if if that relationship has broken down and you and you are not seeing anything you are gaining anymore, and then you are still being hurt, and your emotions are being trampled upon, then it might be time to find um, an alternative. And finally, 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 please, 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 do not pay it forward. Don't pay toxicity forward. Because you have experienced toxicity is the reason why you should not lead people with toxicity. Read, learn, grow, um, lead, lead with empathy, be genuinely interested in your team members, make them feel happy coming to work. Don't lead in a way whereby people are afraid of you, people are afraid to come and knock on you, people are afraid to talk to you. Don't be that kind of leader. Don't pay it forward. 
don't play for it. Let that toxicity end with you. On that note, that will be all from me. Thank you very much for listening in, everyone. Thank you, Lara. Thank you. I hope you gained one or two things from my session today. Wow. Thank you. Awesome, powerful, one straight hour, fully, fully loaded. Thank you so much, Bumi. Thanks for Thank giving you. of yourself authentically. I mean, I could see the passion through which um, you were expressing your views, telling us your story. Amazing. One hour, we still have over 90 people on the call listening to you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll have about 15 more 15 to 20 more minutes so that we can take more questions because really this, this is a very crucial topic that um, we are discussing this evening. I'll quickly summarize. Thanks so much for starting on a very balanced perspective, um, Bumi, uh, Bumi, with your views around the reasons why we are in the workplace, the different kind of cultures, behavior that all come together in the workplace. The need for us not to take it personal it's usually geared towards achieving the goal of the organization, even though sometimes conflict might be intentional. Uh, sometimes it also can be non-intentional as well. Thanks for bringing that. And thanks for also reminding us on the purpose of <clears throat> leadership, um, the importance of why we should ensure that we create an environment where other people can thrive. You equally spoke about the features of toxic environment just for us to be aware of um, and the mistakes that, that we can also equally avoid in, in such environment. Thanks for sharing your story. I mean, this is one area of your life that you had equally experienced for a couple of years and you indeed um, came out stronger and better. Thanks also for sharing the need for us to understand the purpose why we are in the organizations where we work, the importance of us understanding the people that we work with, the organization, our peers, um, our colleagues, and the need for us to also ensure that we resolve if there are any conflict that we might have experienced in the workplace, why it is important for us to um, decompose so we can have we can let off those negative energy of our mind for our own health, health, emotional and mental benefit. Thank you for sharing the various tips on how we can heal from hurt in the workplace. I think what stood out really for me is, is when you were talking about purpose, I always tell people, so without purpose, it's just like you're, you're just living life without any meaning. But when there is a higher purpose that you're attached to things, it helps shape your perspective. It helps with your thinking. It helps with how you even deal and respond to issues once your purpose is clear. And of course, there are other very fantastic, valuable tips that you, you, you shared. I mean, you capped it nicely when you said, do not pay it forward. Just two days ago on Friday, I was just here with two people you know, in my office. And I was talking about how I, I, I had gone through a toxic leadership for a couple of years. And it helped me how not to lead people. And I wasn't going to, and I made a vow to myself, I wasn't going to allow any team member to work with me to experience what I experienced when I was um, reporting to a toxic leader. I, 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 I said, we go through situations and experiences so that we can come out better and help other people and not just to complicate other people's life as well. So that was fantastic. Don't pay toxicity forward. On that note, we'll go ahead and ask questions and have our questions answered. Now, I don't know if there are any questions from anyone in the house. Please feel free to either use the raise hand button or you can put your question in the chat box. I'm trying to look for questions. There are lots of emojis and <laughs> response to that amazing session. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I have, I have a direct question here to me. It reads, how do you, when you work in an organization where as much as possible, there are policies that have been put in place to guide against toxicity, but 
the leaders do not um, lead by example, what do you do? Oh. Now, one of the very, I think it was in 2013 that someone told me that, uh, how did she say this thing to me? So I was complaining about a particular organization that I, that I was working for and I kept complaining, complaining, complaining. You know how we complain? And then she said something to me, she said to me, don't complain about a situation you are unable to change. So I think it was either change, if you can't change it, don't complain. And I know you are not complaining, you are asking me. So what I would say is that you first of all have to look at the situation and figure out what is your level of in that situation. So for example, some of my team members are on this call. So for whatever reason, we start to experience toxicity on our team. Uh -uh. I have relationships with some, some, some people on this team, for example, that I can call and start to have conversations like, ah, guys, this is what I'm hearing now that we are becoming a little bit harsh on this thing. We need to change our style. So that means I have a level of influence to change because I have the ears of some of my team members. We can talk, we can quickly call ourselves into a group call that, ah, guys, this is what is going on. And then we start to make that change. If it is happening with a, in an area that is outside of my area of influence or control, then I have to now look within me. I always don't, I never counsel people to leave their organizations because I can't come and I won't be able to support you. So I won't say leave, you know, leaving organizations or ne leaving negative organizations are, 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 are decisions that you must take personally on your own. Having looked at all the consequences, don't look to anybody to tell you to leave, you know, so I won't say leave. What I would just say, thank you, Dr. Osas, and thanks everyone. What I would just say is, if you are unable to influence or change that situation and those toxic leaders, you have to now start to work on yourself, how you perceive or how you deal with the situation. So for example, if they like to shout in a meeting, so you can in that meeting, maybe you have like a in your head or you, you know, you have like psychological blockers in the way that you can manage those <laughs> those those negative things try to be there because also let me let me please count let me also sound this note of you remember i mentioned earlier that maybe i shouldn't have stayed too long in, in the environment that i worked in that was toxic the reason i say this is because when i left that organization i didn't come anywhere again there are two people on this call today that came to drag me out of that i was in because i was scared because I, 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 as I had learned and I had grown and everything, but I, I didn't know how the next place of work was going to be. I didn't know toxic. I didn't know whether I was going to have a leader that would be toxic. I, and, 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 and I was not willing to find out. So please just leave me in my house. Let me be eating. My husband is still feeding me. I'm not, I don't know whether I want to come and do nine to five again. And there's, there are two people on this call that came and dragged me out of that place. And that's why I say it's very important to get, uh, to have mentors, to have coaches. So you and speak to you from a place of love so if you can't change so i, I that's that it's not always good for us to stay for too long in a toxic environment because you don't even know how deep it can affect you but whilst you still stay find a way to cope whilst you still stay find a way to cope find your coping mechanisms because if you can't change you may not be able from from you may not be able to change those leadership. You can report to HR, HR can, HR can do, but if you are not able to make, if you are not able to influence the change, you must then now work on how you perceive or how you deal with that uh, pain or that toxicity. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We also have other coaches on the call this evening. Please Let's be free to contribute as well. We have Dr. Osad, we have Coach Sepre, we have Coach Dorothy, Coach Taiwa Baton. We, we have very seasoned certified coaches on, on the call as well. Yes, so thank you. We ha I have a qu another question here. It reads, what do you do with a boss who is selfish, not wanting to give opportunity for growth and having advantage with the other subordinates? 
okay, I don't understand the advantage um, question. Uh, advantage comment. Like I'm trying to understand what the person means. So Is I it take to, advantage? Yeah, well, I think what this person is trying to say is this person feels um, seg segregated at work and he or she is not given opportunity to learn um, as compared to other subordinates at work. Okay. Sometimes this happens, favoritism at work with your line manager, and, you know, different things just happen. So the line manager is not giving you opportunities to work. For me personally, so people have different reasons at work. Some people just pay my cash and go. Me, one of my biggest, number one, list of reasons why I take jobs is what is the potential for me to grow on it so you have to find out because I mean I, I don't know how you're going to be able to have a conversation with this kind of individual telling him how you feel if he's that kind of a person he, he has some soft moments because nobody is also completely a demon right so he, he or she may have their own times where they listen so if you can find such a time when the person would listen to you and you air your views that, oh, master, this is the way I feel. And these are two examples that happened recently. You did, and other people on the team did that made me feel this way. And I'm thinking that there's a, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe I'm not interpreting this very well. So if you can speak to the person, all well and good. If you are not able to speak to the person, please, you need to figure out what is important for you in remaining. So if, one of, the, one of the reasons why I leave organizations is once I have my learning in that organization, once I've maxed out my learning and I'm not seeing anything else that I'm needing or I'm going or anything that is challenging me, once I can do that job with my eyes closed. Ah. So if it is key for you and you are not learning, not learning on a job is a, because that's why we are there. We are there to learn and grow and then earn and, and support our lifestyle. Like I said, option D is very, very, <laughs> option B is a valid point. So nobody is tied to any organization. If a place doesn't serve you, by all means, look out. We have so many organizations out there and there are lots of, thank you. Let me not talk too much. I even tell people now that opportunity, our opportunity now is global. It's no longer local. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, we have another question here, Treat. What do you do when your coping mechanism is not working anymore? Your coping mechanism is not working anymore. If your coping mechanism is not working anymore and you, 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 you have seen, the next thing you do is to see um, a coach, speak to a coach or a mentor, someone higher up than you, someone that has more experience than you, that can help you look at that. I mean, Lara still shared a mentor tool down on her LinkedIn page. I saw it today. I mean, if Lara at this level of her life is still having people that are speaking to her, she said her mentor told that don't major on the minor and minor. You know, so very important that you get a coach that would speak. So if yeah. your coping mechanisms are no longer working, then you are getting to, it means you are getting to a dangerous place in your, in your, in your psyche. So speak to a coach. Yes, and, we, and we, we have several coaches on this call. Bumi, can you still hear me? I think Bumi is frozen. And we also have several coaches on this call. Exactly. You know, we have several coaches on this call. I read me. It doesn't serve anyone great good to remain in a toxic environment for too long. It will affect you eventually. So speak to a coach and start the options. Thank you. So we already have a comment from Coach Steph Red as well. Um, it reads, the person may need to identify what exactly the reason is for being bypassed. Oh, this is in response to the earlier question. For being bypassed, ask to know why, but assertively find out what may be required and see if there is fear of lack of trust. That um, a response to the earlier question on the person who had sent a question on being bypassed by his or line manager in the workplace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bumi, for that. I have um, a question that was sent to me personally. Okay, I don't please, please read. read. Please read. Okay. Yeah, I like this question. So what do you do when your boss is partial and emphasizes your weaknesses, which is related to HR? Human resources has given me an ultimatum to change or else my will be reviewed. So what did HR tell you to change? So I don't know the contents. 
So you said the person is impartial. Remember that one of the tips that I wrote was that you also need to look at yourself. I understand that there are, that there are bosses that can be very, very, very partial. Like no matter what you do, you just can't do well at all. So look within you and see indeed if there is an element that's the, of what HR has said you should change that requires you to change. Speak to other people, maybe one or two trusted people that, oh, am I really like this? Find out. You know, when we are pointing fingers like this, we point fingers and then there's one pointing back at us. A lot of times our blind spots are not easily cited by us. We don't know what our blind spots are. It's somebody else that will see it for us. So if you think that maybe this is unfair, you have to first of all find out whether indeed it's unfair. If they have told you to change something about yourself, are you that person or you are not that person? If you are really that person, then try and change. If you are not that person, try and be better. You know, try, try and just try and work on that area that has been given to you. And if nothing else changes again, advice. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So I think I have a follow-on question to that from someone who tweets, when the toxicity stems from the head, how will HR now handle it? There's nothing that can be done. Sometimes it's, it's sometimes sometimes it's, sometimes some truths are really difficult. I mean, Lara, you know that. I mean, on the Gems platform, we still spoke recently about some uh, toxic, but have yeah. gone to many. They've even gone to Harvard to study agents. You know, they've studied all these things, but they but they are still toxic. Now the number one guy, and the HR. So it's it, 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 it's either of two things. Either the and the number one guy have a good professional relationship in which the number one guy, the HR, the head of HR or the CHRO and the CHRO is able to influence and change them, send them for courses or when they do something that is wrong, talk to them that, oh God, they don't used to do like this. This thing you are doing is not good. And the first steps to change. I have worked with some leaders that you actually start seeing that they are trying to change. You know, in situations where they, are, they, they will usually have shout, you, you will see them, you know, <laughs> sort of holding themselves because they are trying to change themselves. So sometimes leadership can change, but if, 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 it's a, if it's the number one guy and toxicity is stemming from the number one guy and the number one guy is not ready to change, there is nothing anybody can do. This is the truth because he is the alpha and the omega of that particular company. So there's nothing anybody can do. I, I don't know if anybody else shared. Yeah. Okay, any comment from any member of the coaches in house? Any comment? Somebody asked the question before the, the, yeah. the coach respond. Please add these questions are being sent to me privately. So that's why I have another one I'm also about to read out. <laughs> Let me read my first. Let me read okay, my go first. Ahead, go ahead. I have lots of uh, chats coming in, so I don't lose it. Oh it reads, how do you deal with a boss whom I consider subtle, cunning, speaks with people derogatory, pushes one to the wall most of the time? He would know what he wants, have an answer to what he's looking for, but allows you to move in circles. My God. And that person is a... That's a boss that is a doing boss. this. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, there. This... Could, could that be tough love? <laughs> I'm not asking. I, 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 well, it, it allows you to move in circles. Like the person yeah. knows the answer, but the person they know wants the answer. To figure, yeah. They know the answer, but they want you to figure it out. Yeah, it could be tough. It could it could be tough love. Look, one thing that I say, you know, and I've said this earlier on, it can't always be roses and peaches. You can't always have a boss that is always smiling and is always rubbing and patting your back and all of that sometimes you have a boss whose methods are unusual I me mean, i've worked with someone before that prided themselves as being their boss like gaddafi of you know a very complex and complicated personality and mm. studying this personality itself was a course on their own you know, and I mean, I, I I think I became better, you know, trying to understand because I sort of learned about people and how complex they can be. Yeah, so it's either you take on this, your boss, as a challenge, you know, take it on as a challenge. It, it, it's very important to understand the things 
that are really depressing to you or things that are concerning. <laughs> and you can, eh? <laughs> what you what like he said is not tough love, it's manipulation. I'm also the, <laughs> it's I not tough love, it's manipulation. It's manipulation, yes, because really some bosses are like that. And, and I think that also takes me to another question, which is also quite similar to that. When yes. bosses sort of feel they, they put you down intentionally. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 They put they put you down intentionally. Maybe shred in a way. Pieces. Yes, to shred you, or maybe in a way to also it can be due to their own ego. We can't. I can't say I don't know this person, but yes, these are real life scenarios that people people do experience. We and please the, go on. They will take Shion Walker. Shion Walker's hand is Yes, up. and the worst part of it is that we work. I mean, this is a cultural environment, you know. So there's still that oh, big respect around the leader. Oh, there's a way that we can't really do. You know how we are with respect in our society. So, like Steph Red said earlier, if you even to this person about your concern, you need to say it in a way that will not bruise them. You need to, you need to, you need to express yourself in a way that doesn't rub up wrongly on their ego. Say, there, there are two things. Is it that you want to have the discussion with the person? And before you have the discussion with the person, you need to have studied the person very well. Even the most competent and the most mean guys have their moments of, they have their, you know, they have their moments where you can catch them off guard. You know, there's a way that you can go with your, because you can't also, I, can, I can't also counsel leaving every place that you Living in every situation, running away from, do you understand what I'm trying to say, Lara? Running mm. away from every seeming boss that you, that may not be, that may not be ideal. Yes, yeah, some of us are lucky and we good, great bosses, but you may, you may go through four not so great and encounter one. You may, you may be lucky and you encounter one all the time. So the question is, will you run all the time? Are you going to keep running all the time? So that's why I always counsel that. Find out what is very important. Why are you on that job? Yes, we leave organizations and uh, we leave organizations. There's a school of thoughts about that. And leadership is everything. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And it's very, very key. But then have something deeper that is driving you um, uh, concerning that job. If you're not able to speak with that person, then how and, and address that issue with that person wisely, please, very, very wisely, then how do you now deal okay. with yourself on it? Thank you. Thank you, Bumi. Can we have um, Coach Stefred comment? And after Coach Stefred, we'll have Shiongo. Okay. I, I'm loving the conversation. I think it's really important that we give people opportunity to, to share their views and perspectives so we can learn. Thank you, Coach Lara. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Bumi, fantastic, fantastic delivery. Thank you thank for sharing. You. Um, I'm, I'm just going to speak uh, generally, particularly from that last question, the person asked about a boss. Um, and I like that you made reference to what John Maxwell said, that everything rises and falls on leadership. But the other part to that sentence or to that his quote is that leadership rises and falls on communication. And what is happening every time in places of work is a conflict of how each person is showing or choosing to show up of which how they are communicating. One person feels attacked, one person feels afraid. The person that everybody is always at that point of trying to self-preserve when we speak. And I'm, I'm going to use the example. I've been watching a series quite recently about the good doctor. That's the name of the series. And there's so much to learn about an autistic doctor who, an autistic surgeon who happens to be the genius about among the team of surgeons. And there was a particular episode that I watched yesterday where it was, there was conflict between the most senior surgeon, the head, one of the head surgeons and the rest of the team members in an, in a, in the course of a surgical process in the OR. And it just seemed like insubordination. And I was trying to play the exact scenario in the Nigerian setting. And it's something that pretty much happens every time where there is a conflict of perspectives. They are able to talk about it without it moving to a conflict of persons. 
Sometimes it moves to a conflict of persons, but they are still able to go back to the center of what is the focus? What are we trying to achieve here? Are we taking out the liver or are we just cutting out a part of it? They are able to come back to the center, but the, there's no deflecting into, oh, because you talked to me like that, I'm not going to get this job done or you are going to. But everybody's able to find common ground for the sake of the goal. And everybody's able to maintain their own positions to understand what can I learn? What could I have said differently? What could I have said better? But we will have these challenges in places of work where it is always seen that one person's word is, one person's word is God or, a person's perspectives is all that there is. And when we're not able to come to that place to understand that difference in perspective is not difference in, is not hatred for persons, we'll keep exactly. thinking someone doesn't like us. Or we'll keep thinking yeah. that, oh, he spoke to me in a particular way. The question now is you want to ask, this person that spoke to me in a particular way, looking at it from two angles, what was his intent? If I'm going to look above, above, how it sounded, even though that is important. If the person has not learned how to communicate correctly, how do I listen for his reason and not focus on his mannerism? So mm. that I can, I will not dwell so much on the emotion, which could be toxic, and possibly also look for a better moment to communicate, of which you also find out that people that communicate aggressively are shielding something. They're either shielding a fear and anxiety or an, an ego, whatever it is. So the more you attack them, the more they want to rise back at you to let you know that, hey, you can't ride over me. There is a fear and everybody nurses a level of fear. So it now has to be a thing of how do we come to the place as leaders, understanding that everything rises and falls on us to communicate more correctly, more assertively and not look at and look more at the goal that needs to be achieved as against the peripherals of anxieties of fear, which we need to now check, why am I afraid? What am I afraid of? What do I lack? What do I need to improve so that I can kill that fear? So that fear doesn't turn to, to, turn to, to the lion that is killing everybody and breaking everybody's spirit so that by the time I break their spirit, that's why I get my strength, which is pretty much what the, what the predators do to praise. They, they, they instill fear and the fear of the prey of the prey is what makes the predator have a high, right? And in, in, the, hum, in, the, in the human perspective is the, for those that communicate aggressively or come to work giving toxicity, they may not know, but just like Bumi has said, that is all that they have experienced so they have unconscious in their subconscious that is what rises they may not know sometimes they know because they want to pay for what some other times they do not know and they are just giving what they know so how do we now get to become more self-aware of ourselves knowing who you are bring yourself to the table and ensure that you are building as against breaking so it still comes back to individuals wow thank you so much for Stephanie. that was deep Shane can we have your comment in two minutes all right. Um, thank you so much, Bumi, for the perspective you've been sharing with us. Um, my own angle of looking at this is when Bumi talked about um, that if the uh, toxicity of the toxic, or really, I mean, uh, behavior is coming from the, the boss, uh, that there is added nothing that anyone can do about it. Is where I, I think I really have an issue with because I really want to believe that um, in as much as the person is not the owner of the business or the, you know, the, 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 the owner of the business, he is also an employee, he or she is also an employee, even though you are the boss. That is where HR comes in, you know, to be able to you know, um, ensure that uh, the relationship between the boss and the uh, subordinates is not a toxic one. I mean, there is no intimidation. There is no, um, um, you know, winch hunting and all kinds of things that some of our bosses uh, try to use. Some of the bosses that we have now try to, to use, you know, against their own people. It's not really that I'm fine. They, sometimes they want to do that intentionally. I mean, We've seen, we've, we've discovered all the different reasons that that, that, could, that could, I mean, have led to that. Probably, you're not um, ego issue. You know, you are not, you don't understand your boss very well. 
you know, some of those things might have led to that. But no matter what have led to that, if we see some of these things playing out, I think that the HR have a lot of work to do to ensure that, you know, that does not place the employee at a disadvantage over time. That's just where I'm trying to, what I just want to ship in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Shil, perspective shared. I had also mentioned that um, in a situation where is able to influence and change the leader, uh, that can be done. In a can be done, that can be done is in a situation where manage business. So it's the owner that is dishing out this toxicity. I'm, 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 and the HR is unable to influence it. I'll be hard pressed. I would like to know how. I mean, I would like to just understand the perspective where, what, what can be done in those for, for Yeah, thanks. <laughs> we, we, we have Dr. Sat on you. hand up, up and Coach Dorothy as well. So Dr. Sass, over to you. And after Dr. Sass, Coach Dorothy. Okay, good evening, everyone. Oh, evening, hold on, sir. please let me reduce. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, all right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Three bosas to you, Bosa, Bosa, Bosa. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well done, uh, well done. Uh, quite deep and uh, very hot. Uh, and thank you, Steph, Red. Thank you, Shane, okay, for coming. Thank you, Lara. Also, I joined quite late, I'm so sorry. Uh, however, I've learned also from all of you. Uh, I just want to quickly share this. Uh, in my course of dealing with a lot of complaints on uh, some people listening here perhaps uh, are related with us uh, by the virtue of the fact that we undo employee assistance program for the organizations. And I've come to realize one common factor with a lot of employees. By the way, let me quickly establish this. Majority of Nigerians have dysfunctional mindsets. And this is not to spite Nigerians. Uh, I, I deal more with Nigerians, so I can only talk about Nigerians. I'm not saying it's only Nigerians that have dysfunctional mindsets. I'm not saying others don't have like Americans, Europeans, but majority of people I deal with are Nigerian. But I can tell you, majority of Nigerians have dysfunctional mindsets in terms of uh, have thoughts that they are yet to heal from. So your boss has a lot of thoughts he's yet to heal from. A uh, hurting soul we hurt others. Got to realize that a hurting soul we hurt others. So a lot of times it may not even be about what you did right or wrong. Uh, the man is hurting. And the only way you know when someone is hurting is through their behavior. Behaviors are actually coping mechanism for the emotions that are dominant or prevalent in us. Behaviors are essentially how we're adapting or coping with an emotional pain we're running away from or an emotional pleasure we're attracted to. So you must first realize that it's because one of the things that crashes people's mindset or their self-esteem or their confidence, happiness, or mental health even, is the fact that they realize that, ah, am I that bad? They start nursing that thought, am I that bad? Am I that incompetent? Am I that this? Or something is wrong with me. Yes, introspect, reflect to be sure you don't have blind spots. And that's why you must always have a coach. As you are rising in life, I tell people, you must always have a coach, have a coach. and it's not about paying. Uh, people have this wrong mindset in Nigeria, everything you have to pay. There are some things you just have to invest into. It could be invest time in contributing to the service of that person. Show you care enough for that person and the person will be able to let you in. I have people in Nature Gen Network that I'm committed to the call at any time. One of them is, is here and she knows herself. She calls me oftentimes at 12 midnight and I will pick. I will pick because I'm committed to her. Yeah, right. so you me, yeah, so you me welcome. <laughs> so you must have because I have my coach also. Anytime I call her, so like, even if it's one year, because over the years, I also impute. So, so you must have a coach. You talk to nobody's an island, nobody is perfect in learning or knowledge. You we all have blind spots, and the higher you're going, the more the responsibility on you. And because of the disrupted society, there are more challenges. All right, that's number one. Number two. This is quite deep that I want to share, but I hope I'm able to break it down. It will help somebody and liberate somebody when it comes to healing from art. Just in, uh, in association and in support of what Gumi has said and all others have said, you must realize this. Whenever you are dealing with challenges, whenever you are faced with problems, until you come to terms with this, you will struggle to heal from it. 
the challenge you're dealing with, the problem you're dealing with is only permitted into your life. You're only permitted to experience it. You're only permitted to interface with it because you have the capacity to interface with it. That's the principle of the universe. It's scriptural, is in energy psychology, neuroscientific researches have pointed it out. In fact, the way we explain in energy psychology is this, when you see a challenge in your life, you are dealing with a nagging boss, they are dealing with a toxic boss, it's a challenge in your life, it's a problem in your life, but the reason why the universe even allowed you to go through that workplace and to go through that boss is because of two, two reasons, resting on the same platform. There's a capacity in you that requires that pressure to bring out the diamond from the raw diamond, to bring out the refined gold from the raw gold in you. There's a capacity in you that the muscles have to expand and such that when you are dealing with that problem and you are no longer at ease and you are trying to solve it, that capacity in you starts growing. So in energy psychology, we're explaining it this way, when you're seeing a problem in your life, everything in life is all about vibration because everything in life is energy. Everything in life is about vibration. There's a vibrational frequency of the problem you're dealing with, whether it's a nagging boss, whether it's a, a bully that you're dealing with in the workplace, all right? There's a vibrational frequency of it. And for you to come through that department or under that boss or be uh, faced with that situation, there is a frequency at which a capacity in this vibrating that forms a resonance with the frequency of that problem. And that's why you were able to go through it. And it's scriptural, if you permit me to quote scripture also. It says, there's no trial or temptation that's ever befallen man that is such that is beyond him. The reason why the trial or temptation is befalling you is because it's not beyond you. It's within say capacity that you carry. Once you can settle this one, you see the problem and just know, oh, there's a capacity in me that I carry that can interface with this problem. And therefore I'm allowed to pass through it. It gives you a level of calming down. Then the third thing I need you to realize is this, which I will stop here. The third thing I need everybody to realize when it comes to toxicity in the workplace, because honestly, I know a couple of organizations are improving. They are doing fantastically well now, but majority of Nigerian organizations are toxic. The culture in majority of Nigerian organizations are toxic. And you won't blame the leaders totally. They also, they are victims. When I see people that are claiming to be bullied, I tell you the bully is also a victim. Somebody is toxic towards you. The toxic giver, the toxicity giver is also a victim, all right? But this is what I need you to take home as a third point so that I can stop here. Whenever you focus on what is not within your control, you are setting yourself up for frustration. It's like you are giving yourself double assault, double slap. The situation is slapping you and you are slapping yourself again whenever you focus on something that is not within your control. No man on earth can change another person. No man on earth can change another person. If the change does not come from within that boss or within that person, you're just wasting your time the more you focus on it. What can you do? Focus on your response. And God's so good. The only thing that triggers stress chemicals into our system is our response not the situation we are dealing with. Yes, you may try to solve the situation, especially if you understand the policies of your organization and the man is violating the policy like Bumi has right, aptly described all this. Yes, you can speak to senior ones. Yes, you can take some decisions, all right? However, the ultimate is this, your response. Are you in charge of your response? Are you in charge of the way you think about the situation? Sometimes we overthink, sometimes we exaggerate. Are you in charge of your emotions? Are you able to build your resilience skills so that you can snap out of unwanted emotions? Are you able to manage your perspective, manage your expectation? Sometimes as followers, as subordinates, we expect too much. We expect too much from leaders. We place them as a demigod, as if they are not meant to have errors. Because if we extract your life, if you become a leader also, you most likely have some areas of toxicity. We are all work in progress, but focus on your response. When you focus on your response, you keep your stress chemicals down. When you keep your stress chemicals down, your thinking brain is able to put and function well so that you can explore options, so that you can see options around you. And even if you are told you're going to resign, please don't just resign because of a problem. If you resign because of a problem, that problem came into your life because you may not accept it, but it's the bitter truth. The problem is permitted to come your way because it has a role to play in your life. You run away from it, I can bet it with you, you will still face it in, we will face it in another organization in another way. Because until you pass the exam for the level you are, 
you cannot move to the next level. So don't just resign. Ensure it, it may be your, it's the fact that you need to learn how to respond better. That's what that situation is meant to build in you. It may be that you need to develop your assertiveness skills. It may be that you need to develop your confidence in communicating. Even when you are under pressure, ensure you're asking yourself, am I responding well? Then focus on what is within your control, then realize that there's something in you that permitted the challenge to actually come your way. Wow. Focus on your focus. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir. That was very deep. So we'll take Dorothy. Coach Dorothy, can we have your comments in two minutes, please? Thank you, Coach Lara, for this topic. It's a topic that we hardly ever talk about. And unfortunately, us HR people are the ones that face hurt the most. Uh, we're the most hated people in the organization. Um, I also want to talk, uh, say thank you to Bumi. Thank you so much for the way you've dealt with this topic. And of course, the other people who have contributed. Coach Osas has said, um, on my list of what to say, he said about three, four. So I just want to mention quickly one, uh, um, uh, two things, two things. So I have worked in an organization where I've been a victim of toxicity and it's so easy. You know, you know the way you put cream on your skin and your skin absorbs the cream, you know, or the lotion. That's how it is when we're in a toxic environment. If we're not careful, um, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves absorbing that toxicity. I'm going to quote a scripture uh, just like uh, Dr. Osas did. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. What that means is that be careful of what you take in, be careful of what you are accepting, be careful of what you are internalizing because if he... I mean, it can hurt you so much that it begins to change uh, the DNA of your character. You become, you know, you become like that toxic environment. The Yoruba say that when a leaf stays so long on soap, what happens? It becomes soap. So we need to be very careful that we're not taking in that kind of environment. I would say, make a plan, make a plan. Um, make a plan, make an exit plan. If you, if you believe that is, if of course you are not also part of the people contributing to that toxicity, because it's easy to point to other people, but sometimes it's difficult for us to see that we are also contributors to that process. So here's what I did. Part of one of the things I did was, and, and um, there's uh, one of my I mean, mentees on this call, and this is what I tell her all the time take yourself away from the situation. Don't, if, if someone is coming at you, if people are coming at you, if the environment is coming at you, learn to take yourself away from that environment. And what I do is I confess my affirmations to make sure that uh, I hurt easily. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm fragile, <laughs> but, and I know that a lot of us are because we're just human beings. So it's important that you go after you experience that toxic behavior, toxic environment, take yourself away. If it is when you are going home, please, you know, um, speak some positive affirmations into your life so that you can restore your soul. You can restore your self-confidence. You can, you know, um, ensure that it's not, it's not being injected into your own blood. So, um, but I, I, would, I would like to say that we need to be, um, we need to be, we need to ensure that we are not also contributing to that uh, um, toxicity. Make sure that even if everybody is being disrespectful to other people, you make up your mind that you will be the exception in the organization. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dorothy. That was absolutely spot on. We need to close the meeting now. However, um, I, I just got a private chat from someone. I, I would like, to, I'll read out her, her question, <clears throat> but I believe that she might have to reach out to someone after, after this um, session. I'm not sure we'll have enough time. Um, Ma, I'm a victim of sexual attempt by the MD. And I was demoted at my place of work. I was disappointed at my head of department and HR because I, I explained and showed evidence. Yet, no management team was able to stand up and defend 
my cost. Now my productivity level has dropped and I don't find purpose going to work anymore. Yes, I am job hunting, but I'm mentally hot. Um, I'm gonna give this person my number. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take it up after, after this meeting. But I don't know if Dr. Osat has a very short or quick response to, to the question I just read. Hmm. So, it's so, touching yeah. to, so touching to hear that. And yeah. uh, if the person is listening now, I need you to know that you are not alone. There are a lot of cases like that, all right? Uh, I don't know the extent to which yours happened, but uh, two weeks ago, uh, somebody called our EAP line and our EAP manager picked or, or she routed the call to me. Uh, the only thing remaining uh, to make it a rape case was just for the man to penetrate. And uh, I hope there's no child listening. Uh, God just saved the lady. And this is a boss, a direct boss to this lady. They had to, because you know they're working remotely majorly, so they had to agree to meet somewhere. I don't know how it happened that they had to meet in a private place and she didn't also suspect, but it happens anyway. And I don't want to bore you guys with the details. Uh, and I'm trying to say this so that number one, you, the lady will realize that it's not there. Number two, you, it's not, the problem is not yours. The problem is the, uh, the, the, the person that attended the MD himself. All right. So, one of the things that you must do to heal from it is to forgive yourself. Uh, don't hold any judgments or start labeling or blaming yourself. Uh, the human mind can find anything it's looking for. So if you are seeking out in your head, trying to analyze where you made a mistake that got to this extent, you will find something. And you can hold on to one thing and start blaming yourself and refusing to forgive yourself. Not forgiving others is terrible. But not forgiving yourself is most terrible. It crashes your service team is hijacks and steals away your identity. So, not blaming yourself. The man is a victim of whatever circumstance. The MD himself is a victim of whatever circumstance is coming from. Is dysfunctional. All right. Number three, you must realize that in life, it's not always a, an ideal world. It's just a realistic world. It's not often the times that the right people are the ones that move through. And you may not even have control over this situation. But the problem, God so good, what God did with this universe, that you and I, as devilish, as wicked as the world may be, what God did and preserved for us all is that what really hijacks and destroys our mindset and weakens us, or what really stresses us, is our response. And I cannot overemphasize this. One of the responses you need to pick up is to start learning how to talk to people that are reliable, are confident, are confidential, and are competent in helping you to on not uh, different knots in your mind concerning this issue. Thank God that Lara has volunteered for you to call her. Please call her, all right? You need to start talking. Don't bottle it up. Emotions are energy, emotion. That's where the word emotion came from. Energy cannot be destroyed. You just have to convert the energy you are stocking in you, you are piling up, or else, they will hamper your physical health. They will hamper your mental energy, your mental health over time. So please talk. The last thing I will say to you is this. It's good that you're job hunting already. And it's good that you are uh, you know that uh, you need to move out of that place. Because if I'm thinking if you were my sister, uh, I would be hungry also. And I will begin to look for somewhere for you that is better. But let me post your bubble. And it's the bitter truth. Oftentimes the truth may be heavy to say. Nothing on earth can guarantee you that somewhere else you go, you will not be exposed to sexual harassment. Now, I want to challenge you as a lady. Any lady listening to me now, in today's world, you must learn how to defend yourself against sexual harassment. And when defending yourself against sexual harassment, you have to use the double-edged approach. Permit me again to quote from the scripture. Please pardon me. It says, be peaceful as a dove, but be as cunning as a serpent. Be peaceful as a dove, but be as cunning as a serpent. Live with peace with all men, but you must be smart and cunning as a serpent. Time will not permit me to describe what the meaning of being cunning as a serpent is. Sometimes, sometimes, in order to save your brand, 
in order to save your brand and in order to you even save your job or save yourself, you're going to be as funny as the serpent. Now, in the case of that MD, I'm sure you are not the first victim. And I'm sure we still do it to other people there. You got to make up your mind that you'll be peaceful with everybody. But at the same time, you got to want to have evidence, if at all. If at all, you want to exonerate yourself. But if your goal is not to exonerate yourself, just leave that apart. Exit from that organization. All right? However, if you want to exonerate yourself, you've got to have evidence. And sometimes people feel it's controversial, but it's just the world we are in. The world is not an ideal world. It's a real world. It's a real world. It's a mixture of black and white. And we must all think in black and white. A lot of good people think too much in whites. That's why they say, oftentimes say Christians are not good business, but they, are give, uh, they, they struggle in the business world because they think only in the white dimension. The world is not made up of white. God that created the world also allowed both white and black. He allowed both angels and demons. And we must all think like that. And it's the reality of the world. You've got to be able to provide evidence. If at all you want to exonerate yourself or you want to protect your position or promotion or whatever you want to promote. Sorry, permit me to add this last thing. The last thing I want okay. to say to that lady, the last thing I want to say to that lady, uh, aside the fact that I understand how to defend yourself against sexual harassment, the last thing I want to say to her is this. Now, there is, and I'm being careful, that's why I'm hesitating to say this, because I know it can be sensitive and I don't want a situation where some ladies will think I'm against them. This, while I have respect for every woman, while I understand that, uh, uh the the bully the sexual harasser if there's any word like that is the victim however there's something called energy all right some men don't need any cue honestly some men don't need any cue to find you attractive and undress you in their mind and be thinking of all manners of things to do with you and if you're against it they will victimize you some men don't need anything like that they are just crazy they are just dysfunctional in fact some of them are psychosexual disorders However, this is why I say to ladies, because I've handled a lot of cases like this, right from my time in the Nigeria Force Hospital to now, through EAP. Please, when you're working in the workplace, as much as possible within your control, go and learn about cues, sexual cues, and try to tone down on it. Learn about sexual cues and try to tone down on it. I'm saying this because we have too many dysfunctional minds among men, and it's the bitter truth. One of the things we say when it comes to sexual harassment defense, that's something called sexual harassment defense in the workplace, is for you to have what we call organizational awareness. It's not enough to have others' awareness, social awareness. You must have organizational awareness that is be aware of the prevalent culture in that organization. In fact, don't limit it to your department. Get to know what's prevalent in other department. They get to know what is prevalent in the unit that is working directly with the MP, the personality of the MP. Once you understand that so that you can start taking preventive measures, it's better to prevent something, it's easier than to start trying to resolve it. You must also have political awareness. Don't limit your influence, your being known to your department alone, so that in the day, on the rainy day, you can have people that can stand up for you, interact with the people in other departments, interact across vertically and horizontally. Uh, I'm not saying you should flex. I'm not saying you should become aimlessly roaming about and say you want to talk to other. But if you study more, you will understand how to interact. Be politically aware. Be connected to people. Start building. In fact, build your influence map, your map of influence. Start asking yourself, in my department, if I'm not there, who are the decision makers that will stand for me? It's not enough for you to know them. More importantly, is for them to know you and to value you. In other department, who are the people that value me, that know me, and that can stand for me when I'm not there? At the management, at the executive level, and start building your influence quotient by being politically aware. Those things are key because you will not only have the times that are good, you will have bad times. It's the bitter reality of life, and you need people beyond you with stronger and wider influence to stand for you on that day. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Osas. Wow, that was so deep. Thank you. Unfortunately, because of our time, we can't take any further questions. Uh, we, uh, I mean, a couple of more questions have been sent to me, but I won't be able to read now those questions. And Bumi also still has one or two um, questions sent to her. Please send your question to our email 
address hrjamescoaches at gmail.com and then we would redirect your questions to the appropriate coaches and respond to your question. We also encourage everyone to please fill the feedback form as well so we can have your details and share the recording with you. Thank you so much, Bumi. Any parting words from you while we wrap up today's session? Yes, 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 indeed. Thanks everyone for having me. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Osas, for, I mean, just putting me in a lot of things that I learned on my own. I don't know how to say this, but like, he said a lot of things that I literally learned, you know, in my own experience and maybe one or two people spoke some things to me but other things I just figured on, on my own and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful you, uh, let's all take some of the things shared today and some of what others and myself have shared today as armory they are like armor um, that you wear to the workplace don't go into the workplace and that's another thing I would, I would like to leave you with as much as possible prepare I mean, uh, behind you for some of these things because we know that uh, we don't see a lot of material out there nobody prepares us for the world of work beyond going to school and just getting a job so yes you're not trying to scare anyone but you're just trying to let them know that it's beyond you know other things happen in the workplace beyond itself that we do so they will do very well to be prepared um to survive and to in the workplace and let's also be a good human very very key be a good human please let us try to make our workplaces safe places where um, individuals starts with each and every one of us thank you very much that'll be all thank you so much Bumi. do we have any member of the participants who want to just give a vote of thanks on behalf of everyone anyone who wants to share a vote of thanks on behalf of anyone please feel free it's been amazing two hours of impactful learning. Anyone? All right, I think I will go ahead to do the vote of thanks anyway. Oh, thank you, thank God. Oh, Wilson is saying yes, okay. So um, please to everybody, um, to Coach Bumi, to Coach Lara, to Dr. Saz and every contributor, thank you for sharing from your wealth of knowledge and experience. It's been like um, so much epiphany on my end, getting to learn, getting to learn, getting to understand the various places. And while I've been, I've been, I've been privileged to be in a team where I have a wonderful team members. I'm like, okay, what if tomorrow and I, and I move and I meet or have to experience some of these things. What am I going to do? What to be my responses? So thank you so much for tonight, for making our time. Thank you, Bumi, for making our time to teach us from your wealth of experience. Like even sharing your experience means a whole lot to me because uh, I was like, wow, so these things are really real in the workplace. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Coach Lara, for betting this vision and always trying to impact us. I'm really much grateful for this learning opportunity and platform thank you everybody for such a wonderful time thank you so much everyone